Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Andrew, I just, I can't thank you enough for taking the vision that God showed you and being so faithful with it. You honor God's Word, you honor His Spirit. Thank you for listening to God because so many lives have been changed. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Friday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. Today, I am ending my first week of teaching on a subject that I call Spirit, Soul, and Body. And I've said this just about every day this week, but this, these are the truths that literally changed my life. I had a emotional encounter with the Lord on March the 23rd, 1968, that showed me that God was real and what was available, and it put a hunger and a desire, lit a fire on the inside of me. But I guarantee you that would have gone out decades ago if I hadn't received these truths. These truths from the Word of God are what's really changed my life. And I'm making this book available to you as a free gift. We also have an illustrated, animated uh, version of this that's about 25 minutes long. We've got an audio book. We've got CDs, DVDs, USB, study guides in English and in Spanish. And we'll be giving out that information at the end of the program again. So I've already said so much, there's no way for me to go back through all of this. Let me just say this, that I've explained that when you get born again, it's not your physical body that gets born again. It's not your soul, which is your mental, emotional part, your personality part. That's not the part of you that changes. You still have the same personality. It's subject to change. And as you seek the Lord and renew your mind, you will start seeing changes in your mental, emotional part, and you can see changes in your body, but you will never see the fullness of your salvation in your physical body and in your soul until we get to heaven. And that's the reason that people sing songs about like when we all get to get heaven. Further along, we'll understand all. You know, in the sweet by and by, because the average Christian only looks at things from the physical body and the soulish perspective. Functionally, most people only think that they are a physical body and then this inner emotional personality part. But there is a third part of you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, prays that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. You've got three parts to you, not just the body, not just the personality inner part, but you've got another part, the spirit. And that spirit cannot be seen or felt with just your physical five senses. You have to perceive it through the Word of God. Jesus said in John 6, 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. God's Word shows you spirit things. And it says in James chapter 1 that the Word of God is like a mirror. This is a spiritual mirror. So we're holding up the Word of God and telling you who you are in Christ. If you have asked Jesus to be your Lord, and if you've given him that, and if you put faith in what Jesus did, then according to what Jesus said in John chapter 3, you've been born from above. And 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you are a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. That's not true in the physical realm. It's not true in the mental, emotional realm, but it is true in the spirit realm. And how do you tell what's happened to you in the spirit realm? You look in the Word. And so yesterday, I was using Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, which says, put on the new man which is created in righteousness and true holiness. You aren't trying to become righteous. You were created righteous. It's already a done deal in your spirit. And it's not a baby righteousness that you've got to get more righteousness and increase. You are as righteous as Jesus is. Over in 1 John chapter 4, Verse 17, it says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, speaking of Jesus, so are we in this world. It didn't say, so are we going to be in a future world, in heaven. So are we in this world. Again, if you don't understand spirit, soul, and body, you cannot understand that because you go look in the mirror and I guarantee you this physical body is not like Jesus. This physical body can't walk through walls, can't appear and disappear. Jesus did all of those things in His glorified body. Also, this physical body and mental, emotional part does not know everything yet. 
SO IN YOUR BODY AND IN YOUR SOUL, YOU ARE NOT LIKE JESUS IS RIGHT NOW. BUT 1 JOHN 4, 17 SAYS, AS JESUS IS, SO ARE WE IN THIS WORLD. That you, THERE'S NO WAY YOU CAN UNDERSTAND THAT YOU ARE ACTING PERFECTLY LIKE JESUS, THAT YOU ARE THINKING PERFECTLY LIKE JESUS. BUT IF YOU UNDERSTAND THAT IT'S YOUR SPIRIT THAT GOT BORN AGAIN AND THE REAL YOU IS A SPIRIT BEING, THEN YOU CAN UNDERSTAND THAT IN YOUR BORN AGAIN SPIRIT, YOU ARE IDENTICAL TO JESUS. Do YOU KNOW, THAT SOUNDS LIKE BLASPHEMY TO THE AVERAGE relig RELIGIOUS PERSON. THE AVERAGE religion, RELIGIOUS PERSON BELIEVES THAT THEIR SINS ARE FORGIVEN, BUT IT WON'T REALLY HAVE ANY uh, TANGIBLE EFFECT UNTIL WE GET TO HEAVEN. SO WHEN WE GET TO HEAVEN, THEN WE'RE GOING TO RECEIVE ALL OF THESE THINGS. BUT RIGHT NOW, THE AVERAGE RELIGIOUS PERSON WILL JUST SAY, I'M AN OLD SINNER SAVED BY GRACE that your sins are forgiven, and someday when we get to heaven is when salvation is really going to take place. I will admit this, that when we get to heaven is when you'll get a glorified body and you won't be subject to the same problems that we have in this physical body. You're going to get a renewed mind and you'll know all things, even as also you are known, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and that's going to be awesome. BUT RIGHT NOW IN YOUR SPIRIT, YOUR SPIRIT IS AS SAVED RIGHT NOW AS IT WILL EVER BE IN ETERNITY. IT'S NOT GOING TO GROW. IT'S NOT GOING TO INCREASE. IT'S NOT GOING TO HAVE TO BE GIVEN MORE OF THE POWER OF THE HOLY GHOST. YOUR SPIRIT IS PERFECT RIGHT NOW BECAUSE AS JESUS IS, 1 JOHN 4, 17, SO ARE WE IN THIS WORLD. THAT CAN'T BE TALKING ABOUT YOUR BODY, CAN'T BE TALKING ABOUT YOUR SOUL. IT'S GOT TO BE TALKING ABOUT YOUR SPIRIT. YOUR SPIRIT IS AS PERFECT AND COMPLETE AS JESUS IS. HERE'S ANOTHER VERSE THAT GOES ALONG WITH THAT. IT'S 1 CORINTHIANS chapter 6, VERSE 17. HE THAT IS JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT. AND IN THE GREEK, THAT WORD FOR ONE IS HES, H-E-I-S, AND IT MEANS A SINGULAR ONE TO THE EXCLUSION OF ANOTHER. IT'S NOT LIKE SAYING THAT WE'RE ONE IN THE SENSE THAT WE'RE SIMILAR, THAT WE'RE PARALLEL, LIKE HERE'S GOD HERE AND HERE WE ARE DOWN HERE. NO, IT MEANS WE ARE IDENTICAL, A SINGULAR ONE TO THE EXCLUSION OF ANOTHER. AGAIN, YOU CANNOT INTERPRET THAT AS TALKING ABOUT THAT YOUR BODY IS ONE WITH THE LORD BECAUSE YOUR BODY IS STILL SUBJECT TO SICKNESS, POVERTY, uh, HURT, PAIN, uh, IT'S LIMITED, CAN ALL BE IN ONE PLACE AT A TIME. IT CAN'T GO THROUGH A WALL, AND YET JESUS' GLORIFIED BODY COULD DO ALL THOSE OTHER THINGS. IT'S NOT TALKING ABOUT YOUR SOULISH REALM, BECAUSE, AGAIN, YOUR SOUL IS SUBJECT TO DEPRESSION, DISCOURAGEMENT, THINGS, AND IN HEAVEN, THAT'S NOT GOING TO BE SO. IT SAYS IN ISAIAH THAT WE WON'T EVEN REMEMBER THE FORMER THINGS, AND ALL OF THIS HAS PASSED AWAY, AND THAT HE'LL WIPE AWAY TEARS FROM OUR EYES. YOUR SOUL AND YOUR BODY ARE NOT ONE WITH JESUS. BUT IN THE SPIRIT, YOUR SPIRIT IS ONE, A SINGULAR ONE TO THE EXCLUSION OF ANOTHER. THERE IS ZERO DIFFERENCE BETWEEN YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT AND JESUS BECAUSE IT IS THE SPIRIT OF JESUS THAT CAME IN YOU. YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT IS ONE WITH JESUS. AND I KNOW SOMEBODY'S THINKING, I CAN'T BELIEVE THAT. THAT'S BECAUSE, AGAIN, YOU'RE LOOKING FOR THIS IN THE MIRROR. YOU'RE WANTING TO FEEL IT IN YOUR EMOTIONS. BUT I'M TELLING YOU WHAT THE MIRROR OF GOD'S WORD SAYS. HE THAT IS JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT, A SINGULAR ONE TO THE EXCLUSION OF ANOTHER. YOU ARE IDENTICAL. IF THERE ARE SUCH THINGS IN THE SPIRIT WORLD AS MOLECULES, ATOMS, AND THINGS LIKE THAT, YOU ARE ATOM FOR ATOM, MOLECULE FOR MOLECULE, IDENTICAL TO JESUS. THIS GIVES UNDERSTANDING TO JOHN 14, 12, THAT THE WORKS THAT I DO SHALL YOU DO ALSO, AND GREATER WORKS. HOW COULD THAT BE? PEOPLE THINK, MAN, I DON'T HAVE ANY POWER IN MY HANDS. I DON'T FEEL LIKE I COULD DO ANYTHING. IT'S NOT IN YOUR BODY. IT'S NOT IN YOUR SOUL, BUT IN YOUR SPIRIT. YOU'VE GOT THE SAME POWER THAT RAISED JESUS CHRIST FROM THE DEAD BECAUSE YOU'VE GOT JESUS LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU AND ALL OF HIS RESURRECTION POWER. AND IF SOMEBODY SAYS, WELL, MAN, I DON'T BELIEVE I HAVE THAT, WELL, ACCORDING TO ROMANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 9, IF ANY MAN HAVE NOT THE SPIRIT OF CHRIST, HE IS NONE OF HIS. IF YOU DON'T HAVE CHRIST LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, THEN YOU AREN'T SAVED. YOU AREN'T ONE OF HIS. AND IF YOU ARE SAVED, THEN ACCORDING TO THE SCRIPTURE, CHRIST IN YOU, THE HOPE OF GLORY, COLOSSIANS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 27, YOU ARE COMPLETE IN HIM. 
HE IS NOW LIVING IN YOU AND IN YOUR SPIRIT REALM. YOUR SALVATION IS COMPLETE. MAN, I JUST CAN'T TELL YOU WHAT THIS DOES FOR ME. YOU KNOW, I DON'T SHOW A LOT OF EMOTION. MY STAFF HAS ACTUALLY MADE A... THEY PUT MY FACE ON DATA, THAT STAR TREK CHARACTER, YOU KNOW, THAT HAD NO EMOTION, AND THEY CALL ME ANDROID WAMUK BECAUSE WHEN BAD THINGS HAPPEN, I JUST DON'T GET DERAILED. AND EVEN WHEN GOOD THINGS HAPPEN, I DON'T RUN AND SHOUT AND DEMONSTRATE THE WAY SOME OTHER PEOPLE DO. AND SO I'VE HAD SOME PEOPLE MAKE FUN OF ME AND SAY THAT I JUST DON'T HAVE EMOTIONS. I HAVE EMOTIONS. WHAT I'M SAYING RIGHT NOW JUST LIGHTS MY FIRE. BUT I HAVE TO TELL YOU WHEN I'M EXCITED, IT'S NOT REAL OBVIOUS <laughs> TO OTHER PEOPLE. BUT I AM TELLING YOU, THIS IS WHAT CHANGED MY LIFE. WHEN I FOUND OUT THAT IN THE SPIRIT, I WAS EVERYTHING I WAS TRYING TO BE, I ALREADY WAS THAT IN MY SPIRIT. I'M POINTING TO MY BELLY, BECAUSE IN JOHN CHAPTER 7, THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, OUT OF YOUR BELLY SHALL FLOW RIVERS OF LIVING WATER. AND THEN THE WRITER SAYS, THIS SPAKE HE OF THE SPIRIT WHICH THEY THAT BELIEVED UPON HIM WOULD RECEIVE. SO THE SCRIPTURE SAYS, OUT OF YOUR BELLY. I DON'T KNOW IF THAT'S JUST SYMBOLIC OR IF IT'S LITERAL. I DON'T KNOW. BUT ANYWAY, I'M POINTING TO MY BELLY LIKE THIS IS WHERE THE SPIRIT MAN RESIDES. SOME OF YOU LOOK LIKE YOU HAVE MORE OF THE SPIRIT THAN OTHER PEOPLE, BUT THAT'S NOT TRUE, AMEN. <laughs> REGARDLESS HOW BIG YOUR BELLY IS, IN THE SPIRIT REALM, WE ARE ALL IDENTICAL. WE WERE BORN AGAIN, AND IT IS CHRIST LIVING IN US. AND IN THE SPIRIT, YOU ARE IDENTICAL TO JESUS. YOU HAVE HIS MIND. YOU HAVE HIS WILL. YOU HAVE HIS UNDERSTANDING. YOU HAVE HIS ANOINTING. YOU HAVE ALL OF THE POWER AND THE ANOINTING OF, the, of GOD. YOU'VE GOT THE WISDOM OF GOD. IN THE SPIRIT REALM, YOU'VE GOT EVERYTHING. THE CHRISTIAN LIFE ISN'T APPROACHING GOD AND ASKING GOD FOR MORE. THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS FINDING OUT THAT IN THE SPIRIT YOU'VE ALREADY GOT IT, AND IT'S RENEWING YOUR MIND, AND IT'S DRAWING OUT WHAT YOU ALREADY HAVE INSTEAD OF TRYING TO GO GET SOMETHING THAT YOU DON'T HAVE. THAT'S HUGE WHAT I JUST SAID. AND THE BODY OF CHRIST AS A WHOLE they, THEY BELIEVE GOD FOR SALVATION. THEY BELIEVE THEIR SINS ARE FORGIVEN, BUT THEY DON'T BELIEVE THAT THERE'S REALLY VERY MUCH DIFFERENCE UNTIL WE GET TO HEAVEN. THEY ARE JUST AN OLD SINNER SAVED BY GRACE, AND THEY'RE JUST MUDDLING THROUGH THIS WORLD, AND WHEN THEY GET TO HEAVEN, WHAT A DAY THAT'S GOING TO BE. BUT THE TRUTH IS THAT I'M NOT AN OLD SINNER SAVED BY GRACE. I WAS AN OLD SINNER. AND I GOT SAVED BY GRACE, AND I BECAME A BRAND NEW CREATURE IN CHRIST JESUS. AND IN THE SPIRIT REALM, I AM NOT A SINNER ANYMORE. I AM THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD. NOW, I'VE STILL GOT A BODY THAT WAS CORRUPTED BY SIN. I'VE STILL GOT A MIND THAT WAS CORRUPTED BY SIN, AND SO I'M IN THE PROCESS OF RENEWING MY MIND AND BRINGING MY BODY INTO SUBJECTION TO WHAT GOD HAS DONE. AND SO THERE IS A WARFARE AND THERE IS A GROWTH TAKING PLACE IN MY PHYSICAL BODY, IN MY ACTIONS, AND IN MY MENTAL, EMOTIONAL THINKING. BUT IN THE SPIRIT REALM, I AM AS PERFECT RIGHT NOW AS I'LL EVER BE. I'M AS PERFECT RIGHT NOW AS JESUS IS, BECAUSE AS HE IS, SO AM I IN THIS WORLD. HE THAT IS JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT. I'M IDENTICAL TO HIM IN THE SPIRIT. I'M NOT SAYING THAT BECAUSE I'VE OBTAINED IT, BECAUSE I'D EARNED IT, I DESERVE IT. NO, IT'S A GIFT. WHEN I GET BORN AGAIN, I BECAME A NEW CREATURE IN CHRIST JESUS. OLD THINGS PASSED AWAY, AND ALL THINGS BECAME NEW. AND SO NOW, I'M NOT TRYING TO EARN GOD'S FAVOR. JESUS EARNED GOD'S FAVOR FOR ME, AND WHEN I MADE HIM MY LORD, I WAS CREATED IN HIM IN RIGHTEOUSNESS AND TRUE HOLINESS. GOD IS A SPIRIT, JOHN CHAPTER 4, VERSE 24, AND THOSE WHO WORSHIP HIM MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. AND SO BECAUSE I RECEIVE THIS RIGHTEOUSNESS IN MY BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT, AND I'M AS PURE AND AS HOLY AS JESUS IS, HE THAT'S JOINED UNTO THE LORD IS ONE SPIRIT, NOW I CAN APPROACH GOD IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. THAT'S WHAT HE SAID. YOU MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. WHEN YOU COME BEFORE GOD AND YOU SAY, OH, GOD, WE'RE SO UNWORTHY. WE COME BEFORE YOU AND WE'RE SO UNWORTHY. WE DON'T DESERVE ANYTHING. YOU KNOW WHAT YOU'RE DOING? YOU'RE APPROACHING GOD IN THE FLESH. YOU AREN'T WORSHIPING HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. AM I DENYING THAT IN THE FLESH YOU ARE UNWORTHY? NO. I'M UNWORTHY IN MY FLESH, BUT I'M NOT WORSHIPING HIM IN MY FLESH. I COME BEFORE HIM IN SPIRIT, AND I CAN COME BOLDLY UNDER THE THRONE OF GRACE. HEBREWS CHAPTER 4, 
I BELIEVE IT'S VERSE 16, LET US COME BOLDLY UNDER THE THRONE OF GRACE THAT WE MAY OBTAIN MERCY, NOT JUSTICE, MERCY AND GRACE TO HELP IN THE TIME OF NEED, NOT JUST WHEN YOU'VE DONE EVERYTHING PERFECTLY, BUT IN THE TIME OF NEED YOU COME. YOU COME BEFORE HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. AND IF YOU ARE WORSHIPING GOD IN SPIRIT AND in TRUTH, YOU CAN COME BOLDLY INTO THE PRESENCE OF GOD BECAUSE YOU ARE APPROACHING GOD ON THE BASIS OF WHAT JESUS HAS DONE THROUGH THE SPIRIT, THAT BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT THAT HAS BEEN MADE uh, LIKE UNTO JESUS. MAN, WHAT I'M SAYING HERE IS RADICALLY DIFFERENT THAN THE WAY I WAS BROUGHT UP. AND MOST PEOPLE THAT I DEAL WITH, RELIGION TAUGHT THEM ABOUT ALL OF THEIR MISTAKES, THEIR SIN. IT MADE THEM SIN CONSCIOUS, AND THEY APPROACH GOD KIND OF LIKE A WHIP DOG. YOU KNOW, WHEN THE LORD FIRST STARTED SHOWING ME THESE THINGS, I GOT A GLIMPSE OF THIS, BUT I HONESTLY, IT TOOK ME YEARS TO GET TO WHERE I COULD SAY SOME OF THE THINGS THAT I'VE SAID ON TODAY'S PROGRAM. I COULD SEE IT AT A DISTANCE, BUT I COULDN'T EMBRACE IT BECAUSE I WAS JUST SO uh, con CONDEMNED. I WAS SO uh, CONSCIOUS OF MY FAILURES AND MY UNWORTHINESS THAT I JUST COULDN'T EMBRACE IT. IT TOOK A WHILE TO RENEW MY MIND. IT WAS A PROCESS. AND DID YOU KNOW, I REMEMBER ONE TIME, uh, IT'S A LONG STORY. I WON'T GO INTO THE WHOLE THING, BUT I SPENT AN ENTIRE WEEK FASTING AND PRAYING AND LOOKING UP EVERY SCRIPTURE THAT I COULD FIND ON RIGHTEOUSNESS. I USED THE WORD RIGHTEOUSNESS, uh, RIGHTEOUSNESS SAYS AND STUFF, AND I JUST LOOKED UP EVERY SCRIPTURE IN THE BIBLE. AND ANYWAY, WITHOUT GOING INTO GREAT DETAIL, SOME SCRIPTURES IN ROMANS CHAPTER 5 JUST MADE IT VERY CLEAR THAT IN THE SAME WAY I ACCEPTED THAT I WAS BORN A SINNER, WHEN I GOT BORN AGAIN, I HAD TO ACCEPT THAT I WAS BORN RIGHTEOUS. IN THE SAME WAY THAT I BECAME A SINNER THROUGH WHAT ADAM DID, NOT THROUGH WHAT I DID, BUT THROUGH WHAT ADAM DID, IT WAS JUST I INHERITED IT BY BEING BORN. WHEN I GOT BORN AGAIN, I BECAME RIGHTEOUS, NOT THROUGH WHAT I DID, BUT THROUGH WHAT JESUS DID FOR ME. IF I WAS GOING TO ACCEPT THAT I WAS A SINNER THROUGH ADAM, I HAD TO ACCEPT THAT I WAS RIGHTEOUS THROUGH JESUS. IT'S LIKE A COIN. IF YOU'RE GOING TO ACCEPT ONE SIDE OF THAT COIN, WELL, THEN THE FLIP SIDE IS ALSO TRUE. AND I HAD BEEN GROUNDED IN THE FACT THAT I WAS BORN A SINNER AND THAT I FELL SHORT AND THAT ALL HAD COME SHORT OF THE GLORY OF GOD. THAT'S TALKING ABOUT MY PHYSICAL BODY AND MY MENTAL, EMOTIONAL PART. AND I HAD ACCEPTED THAT, BUT IT WAS HARD FOR ME TO ACCEPT THAT MY BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT WAS TRULY RIGHTEOUS AND, and TRULY HOLY. AND I FINALLY JUST HAD TO COME TO GRIPS, AND SO I SAW IT, I UNDERSTOOD IT, BUT, MAN, IT WAS HARD FOR ME TO EMOTIONALLY EMBRACE IT. AND I REMEMBER, AFTER I HAD BEEN FASTING FOR A WEEK AND STUDYING THESE SCRIPTURES, I JUST, THIS IS BEFORE I WAS MARRIED, AND I WALKED OUT IN OUR BACKYARD AND SAT ON THIS BACK PORCH THAT WE HAD, AND I HAD THIS DOG THAT I HAD GOTTEN FROM MY MOTHER uh, WHEN I WAS DRAFTED AND SENT INTO THE ARMY, AND IT WAS A WATCHDOG. IT WAS A THREE-FOURTHS GERMAN SHEPHERD AND ONE-FOURTHS CHOW. IT WAS A BIG DOG, AND IT HAD THIS uh, GOLDEN uh, FUR ON IT. I CALLED THE DOG HONEY and uh, BECAUSE IT LOOKED LIKE HONEY. IT WAS THE COLOR OF THIS DOG. AND ANYWAY, THIS DOG, WE GOT IT FROM A FRIEND. HE GAVE IT TO ME. AND THIS, SOMEBODY HAD BEAT THIS DOG WITH A TRACE CHAIN BEFORE I GOT IT. AND BECAUSE OF THOSE PAST EXPERIENCES THAT THIS DOG HAD BEEN THROUGH, IT WOULD COME RUNNING TO ME. IT WAS THIS BIG DOG, AND IT WOULD JUST COME RUNNING ACROSS THE YARD. BUT WHEN IT GOT FIVE OR SIX FEET AWAY, IT WOULD STOP AND ROLL OVER ON ITS SIDE AND SCOOT UP TOWARDS YOU, AFRAID THAT IT WAS GOING TO BE HIT. AND THIS, YOU KNOW, I GOT THIS DOG FOR MY MOTHER WHEN I WENT TO VIETNAM. SO THIS WAS LIKE TWO YEARS AFTER WE HAD HAD THIS DOG. I WAS BACK IN THE STATES. GOD HAD SHOWN ME THESE THINGS, AND I WAS JUST HAVING TROUBLE SEEING MYSELF RIGHTEOUS. I HAD SEEN MYSELF AS A SINNER FOR SO LONG. I WAS STRUGGLING WITH IT. AND I SAT DOWN ON THE PORCH, AND HERE COMES THIS DOG, AND IT GETS A FEW FEET AWAY, AND IT ROLLS OVER AND WHIMPERS AND STARTS SCOOTING UP TO ME. <laughs> AND I LOST MY TEMPER AT THIS DOG. AND um, I JUST GOT MAD. AND IT'S HARD TO GET MAD AT YOUR DOG WHEN its NAME IS HONEY. AND SO I SAID, HONEY, JUST ONE TIME, I WOULD LIKE YOU TO COME AND RUN UP AND JUMP ON ME LIKE A NATURAL DOG WOULD. I SAID, YOU... I SAID, PEOPLE THINK I BEAT YOU. THEY THINK I'M THE ONE THAT BEAT YOU. I SAID, I'VE NEVER TREATED YOU WRONG. I'VE NEVER DONE THESE THINGS. AND I WAS JUST READING THIS DOG, THE RIOT ACT. ABOUT ONE TIME, I'D LIKE YOU TO ACT LIKE I'M NOT GOING TO BEAT YOU. AND AS I WAS SAYING ALL OF THIS STUFF TO MY DOG, THE LORD SPOKE TO ME AND HE SAID, ANDREW, THAT'S THE WAY I FEEL ABOUT YOU. ONE TIME, I WOULD LIKE YOU TO COME BOLDLY INTO THE THRONE ROOM 
LIKE I HAVE FORGIVEN YOU AND LIKE YOU ARE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD AND THAT YOU I HAVE ALREADY BEEN FORGIVEN AND THAT YOU WOULDN'T COME IN TALKING ABOUT HOW UNGODLY YOU ARE AND ROLL OVER ON YOUR SIDE AND WHIMPER AND SAY, OH, GOD, I'M SO UNWORTHY. HE SAYS, THAT'S APPROACHING ME IN THE FLESH. IT'S NOT APPROACHING ME IN THE SPIRIT. AND I TELL YOU, THAT WAS A GRAPHIC ILLUSTRATION TO ME. HOPEFULLY YOU CAN RELATE TO WHAT I'M SAYING. BUT THERE ARE SOME OF YOU THAT HONESTLY, WHEN YOU APPROACH GOD, ALL YOU DO IS START TALKING ABOUT HOW LITTLE YOU DESERVE EVERYTHING. AND I'M NOT ARGUING WITH THAT. YOU DON'T DESERVE IT, BUT YOU AREN'T APPROACHING HIM THROUGH THE SPIRIT. IF YOU'VE BEEN BORN AGAIN, YOU'RE A NEW PERSON IN THE SPIRIT, AND IN THE SPIRIT, YOU ARE RIGHTEOUS, AND GOD DOESN'T SEE YOU AS A SINNER ANYMORE. YOU WERE AN OLD SINNER, BUT YOU GOT SAVED BY GRACE, AND NOW YOU ARE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD, AND YOU NEED TO COME BOLDLY BEFORE THE THRONE OF GRACE THAT YOU MAY OBTAIN MERCY AND FIND GRACE TO HELP IN THE TIME OF NEED. YOU DON'T NEED TO COME IN TALKING ABOUT HOW UNGODLY YOU ARE. I HEARD KENNETH COPELAND ONE TIME SAY, IF YOU FEEL LIKE A LITTLE gnat COMPARED TO GOD WHEN YOU COME BEFORE HIM AND YOU JUST START TALKING ABOUT HOW SMALL AND INSIGNIFICANT YOU ARE, THEN CHANGE YOUR APPROACH. AND INSTEAD OF TALKING ABOUT HOW SORRY AND HOW INSIGNIFICANT YOU ARE, TALK ABOUT HOW AWESOME GOD IS AND TALK ABOUT HOW WONDERFUL HE IS TO LOVE SOMEBODY AS INSIGNIFICANT AS YOU. AMEN. CHANGE THE EMPHASIS TO WHERE INSTEAD OF AMPLIFYING YOUR FAILURES, YOU AMPLIFY WHAT GOD HAS DONE FOR YOU AND YOU APPROACH HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH AND YOU GO TO WORSHIPING GOD BECAUSE OF WHO HE'S MADE YOU. I TELL YOU, THIS IS AWESOME. THIS HAS LITERALLY CHANGED MY WHOLE OUTLOOK ON LIFE AND BECAUSE OF IT, I HAVE BELIEVED GOD, NOT BECAUSE I DESERVE IT, NOT BECAUSE I'M GOOD OR ANYTHING. I HAVE GOTTEN TO WHERE I RELATE TO GOD ON THE BASIS OF WHO HE IS. AND WHEN I SEE FAILURE IN MYSELF, IT'S EASIER TO DEAL WITH BECAUSE I'M NOT DECEIVED THINKING, OH, I'VE GROWN AND NOW I'M REALLY SOMEBODY SPECIAL. I KNOW THAT IN MYSELF, I'M STILL NOTHING. YOU KNOW WHAT? I WASN'T JUST NOTHING WHEN GOD FOUND ME. I'M STILL NOTHING OUTSIDE OF GOD. THE ONLY GOOD THING IN ME IS GOD, AND TO THE DEGREE THAT I'M SUBMITTED UNTO HIM AND YIELDED TO HIM, THEN I AM GLAD AND PROUD OF WHAT GOD HAS DONE IN MY LIFE. BUT IF YOU WERE TO TAKE GOD AWAY AND JUST LOOK AT ME, I'M STILL NOTHING WITHOUT CHRIST. AND SO I CAN DEAL WITH IT WHEN I SEE PROBLEMS IN MY LIFE. I'M OUT OF TIME AGAIN TODAY. I'M GOING TO BE DEALING WITH THIS A LOT MORE NEXT WEEK. AND I'VE GOT THIS FREE BOOK THAT I WANT TO GIVE YOU ON SPIRIT, SOUL, AND BODY. WE HAVE AN ENTIRE PACKAGE DEAL WHERE WE'VE GOT ILLUSTRATED MESSAGES. WE'VE GOT AN AUDIO BOOK, DVDs, USB, CDs, STUDY GUIDES, IN ENGLISH AND IN SPANISH. PLEASE LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. YOU KNOW, THIS YEAR I'M CELEBRATING 55 YEARS OF MINISTRY. GOD TRANSFORMED MY LIFE AND I'VE BEEN SO BLESSED TO SEE TENS OF THOUSANDS OF PEOPLE'S LIVES TOUCHED AND CHANGED. BUT DID YOU KNOW THAT REALLY THE BIGGEST VISION THAT GOD HAS EVER GIVEN ME IS STILL FOR THE FUTURE. WE HAVE A CAMPUS WITH 1100 STUDENTS NOW IN OUR BIBLE COLLEGE, BUT THE LORD HAS TOLD ME THAT WE NEED TO AT LEAST DOUBLE THAT. IN ORDER TO DO THAT, WE'VE ALREADY STARTED STUDENT HOUSING. WE'RE GOING TO BUILD A STUDENT ACTIVITY CENTER. WE'RE GOING TO BUILD ATHLETIC FACILITIES FORM, A HOTEL CONFERENCE CENTER, A PERFORMING ARTS CENTER TO ACCOMMODATE OUR ART DEPARTMENT. THERE'S JUST A LOT GOING ON. IT'S THE BIGGEST VISION I'VE EVER HAD. AND IN ORDER TO GET THERE, I NEED PEOPLE TO JOIN WITH ME. IT'S OUR PARTNERS WHO HAVE ENABLED US TO DO EVERYTHING THAT WE'VE DONE. AND IT'S MIRACULOUS, BUT WE ACTUALLY NEED TO DOUBLE. IF YOU HAVE NEVER BECOME A PARTNER WITH US, A REGULAR MONTHLY PARTNER, I WOULD LIKE TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO PRAY ABOUT IT. AND IF YOU WOULD GO TO OUR WEBSITE, AWMI.NET SLASH CAMPUS, WE HAVE AN ARTIST RENDERING THERE OF THINGS, A VIDEO WHERE YOU CAN SEE THE FACILITIES, GO INSIDE, LOOK AROUND. I TELL YOU, IT'S REALLY IMPRESSIVE. I BELIEVE THAT IT'S A GOD-GIVEN VISION, BUT IT'S GOING TO TAKE A DOUBLING OF OUR PARTNERSHIP IN ORDER TO DO THAT. IF YOU'VE NEVER JOINED WITH US, I ASK YOU TO PLEASE PRAY ABOUT HELPING US REACH OUT TO OTHER PEOPLE. THIS IS THE ONLY THING THAT'S GOING TO CHANGE THIS WORLD. IT'S NOT JUST POLITICAL. I'M INVOLVED. I'M in, IN THE PROCESS. BUT IT'S THE TRUTH THAT'S GOING TO SET PEOPLE FREE. AND I TELL YOU, THAT'S WHAT THIS BIBLE COLLEGE IS BUILT UPON, IS THE TRUTH OF GOD'S WORD. AND WE ARE WANTING TO EXPAND AND REACH FURTHER AND DEEPER. CHECK IT OUT. PRAY ABOUT IT. JOIN WITH US AND BECOME A FOUNDATION BUILDER. 
Andrew is offering his book, Spirit, Soul, and Body, as his free gift to you today. This book is available in English or Spanish and is limited to one free book per household. This offer is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free book. Andrew's complete series, Spirit, Soul, and Body, is available in a book and study guide in either English or Spanish, as an audiobook on CD, or as a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. This teaching is also available in a newly updated CD or DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. Or you can get these valuable resources as part of the Spirit, Soul, and Body package in your choice of either a CD album, TV, DVD album, or as a USB. Also, this package will include the Spirit, Soul, and Body book, study guide, audiobook, and illustrated DVD or USB. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our partners have recently enabled us to start producing my television programs in Spanish. I think this is going to be a big help. It's going to reach a number of people. Spanish is the second most spoken language in the world, and I'm excited about this opportunity. If you haven't yet become a partner and been a part of helping us do this, I encourage you to do so. Praise God, we are going to share the gospel in Spanish around the world. Man, I appreciate you guys taking the time to check out Army, check out the benefits. As a member of Army, you, you become part of Andrew's uh, big army of, of ministers that are ministering with him and that are, that are uh, we're mobilizing people around the word and the direction that God gives Andrew. Plus, you get Andrew's live Bible commentary. Then you, we also get, you get four Karis Bible College courses per year. Your name gets placed on a list where when people call to know where to go to find, where's a church that I can attend that, that believes this message and teaches like this. And the benefits that you get are just, uh, I wish I would have had these when I pastored. What the hell? And I just want to encourage you to check these benefits out. We can do more uh, together than we can individually and on our own. And I tell you, encouragement is something that is yeah. hard for ministers to come by. Yeah. And yet this is what this army is all about. So yeah. the website will give you a lot of the details if you'll check it out. And we would just love for you to be a part of this and receive all of these benefits. We're here to help each other and to get the gospel out. Amen. See Jesus glorified. Amen.